Hey everybody, welcome to Car Stylus, digital tools and techniques for vehicle designers. Today I'd like to tackle another vehicle, and this one is more like a sedan. Uh, we're going to do it from a sphere again. And just at the beginning, just start to roughen the shape. Uh, I'm starting with uh, using the clip curve brush and blocking out the, the, the plan view, section views, and so forth, and pulling them out using the move tool. Uh, I find this is a quick and easy technique uh, as I get sections that are more compatible, sections that are more realistic, uh, by just kind of blocking them out as I go along and stretching them with the uh, transpose tool. Once I get the block out, I, um, I'm using this new tool, Z Remesher, and Z Remesher is very handy because it, the uh, retop is, is nearly perfect, but it allows me to go in and refine that model and, and uh, get the detail that I need. Although I'm not really looking for detail, I'd like the, the uh, geometry to flow in the direction that I think the, uh, the forms will take. So oftentimes I'd like to uh, use a selection tool and, and uh, just pick one section and work on that and having the other disappeared so that I can get in certain sections and refine those. But again, it's sort of early and uh, we're still blocking these forms out. The masking tool is invaluable. Uh, it allows me to get in there and um, move sections without moving the others. This particular uh, portion, I'm trying to block out that barrel glass. All, usually all production vehicles have barrel glass, and to do that, I'm um, blocking out or masking the rest of the vehicle and then going in section view or rear view and using the clip curve brush to sweep. And then in plan view, I usually just take that uh, section that I've created and put a little plan view in it by pulling it out in the Y direction or the Z direction, depending on how you have your um, ZBrush set up for you. I'm often using uh, lately uh, ZUp because it works with my other programs, Autodesk, um, Autodesk Alias, uh, and, uh, and I like to also set up Modal, which I kind of use too, to work with my vehicles. I want everything to be consistent and with the automotive uh, way of doing things. So still blocking in the vehicle, it's, um, it's coming along, it's still not there, and uh, it's sort of square, but um, you know, you just work, what I tend to do is I work slowly at it, just methodically and slowly, and uh, see where it takes me. What you see here is I use a clip brush to, to work out a little bumperette, and then pulled it out again in plan view to establish some section. And I'll do the same thing for the front, pulling it out a little bit, working in front, rear, top. And it's important to look at the um, it's important to look at the vehicle from all views, as you already know in a three dimensional model. It's about all views and how they relate to the other. It's a learning experience because as a designer, um, a, getting to clay is special, and oftentimes. Um, well, getting to clay and special and to work in, in ZBrush, you know, as you're developing your uh, design is very special because you don't have to wait for a clay modeler. You don't have to wait for an EMM clay. Clay specialist, you just hack at it yourself and work out the forms yourself. And then back and forth with your two-dimensional work. I can now use this as you'll see in upcoming videos using these quick little models for uh, reflection patterns and beginning to do some two-dimensional work. And then I'll bring that back into ZBrush to refine and or redo a model uh, with more definition. So again, I did a Z remesher again, and uh, that helped to, to get the, the um, mesh to flow a little bit better and uh, still working it out. Throwing in some wheels, I should have done this a lot earlier, although, because 
as you know, car models are proportioned. Uh, the wheel is the unit by which cars are designed often or sketched in proportion. You know, wheels, cars are two wheels high, three wheels high, depending on the kind of car and so many wheels in length. So it's very important to establish the wheel, although in this case I didn't because this is from the hip and just kind of practicing. Um, working around the vehicle, keep on going using the, the, the smooth brush, the uh, inflate brush, the high polish brush, the pinch brush is invaluable. Uh, getting those hard lines along the fender flares and such, you'll see later on as I make those hard lines of the fender creases a little bit more pronounced as as you can see here and uh, it allows a lot more control now I know I know that they, they distort the mesh somewhat but uh, it's all worth it in trying to establish some kind of definition vehicles are generally a combination of hard and soft shapes and it's that combination that really makes uh, a form sing so uh, that pinch curve brush is invaluable. Z brush is only part of, it's only part it's only one tool in our toolbox, in the automotive design toolbox. And really, it's not really used in automotive design right now. Uh, I think, I believe it's going to be used in larger proportion in the future, in the near future probably. But it's not. But any tool is just a, a tool in your toolbox. It's, it shouldn't be used exclusively or don't rely on any one tool and say, that's the only tool I use. Because you can find, you find, you'll find at least that many tools can do things better than another tool. I mean, if you only had a hammer in your tool chest and that's all you had, I mean, what a sad tool box. And everything is not a nail, so everything is not, a hammer is not needed for everything. So the same with your uh, design tools, you know, use them when they're, when you need to use them, when, when, when there is an advantage of using them, and when there isn't, don't, don't feel a need of using them. So I'm finding or uh, this in conjunction with Auto, Autodesk Studio Tools or Autodesk Alias Automotive Design Tools. Um, I'm finding that uh, this is perfect when you're using it with that and or Moto or Maya. Uh, to refine your reflection patterns, to refine your surface, to re topologize it as, as they call it. Uh, it's invaluable. You know, don't forget the uh, masking tool to define hard edges too. Uh, there's two ways of doing this, and and you saw me in this video use two ways. One is cutting it, slicing the curve up into polygroups, and then taking those polygroups and putting it on uh, mask by polygroups, and then pushing and pulling the different surfaces to offset them and then creasing where, where needed. Another way is using your uh, masking tool and defining an edge and pushing and pulling uh, like that. Both ways are valid depending on how what you need to do. You know, it's, it's, it's really important, I think, to use, to kind of throw some material in there to see how it, it feels. Uh, it still feels kind of waxy, if you will. It doesn't feel tight enough. And I knew that going in. But what I'll do is later take this model and refine it and do a two-dimensional uh, sketch over it or paint over and, and refine it and then bring it back into ZBrush and or Moto to uh, really make it sing. 
So we're, we're, we're inching up on the end of this short video. And I've sped this video up, if you didn't already know. We're inching up, and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, see you next time.